Sound good? You're good. We started. All right. Welcome, everybody. Um, we have Mary and Tara and Jenna and Pam, Dan, Jim and Cindy. So we have a quorum um, and we can we can begin. Um, we're going to start with the approval of the minutes, which I'm just looking at. Um, is does anybody have any issues with the minutes as written? Anything that we left out or need to add? Can I get a motion to approve the minutes? So moved. From Jim and a second, please. Second from Tara. Thank you, Tara. All right, great. Thank you. All right, so minutes approved. Okay, open issues, old business. All right, so you are first, Bonnie. The first thing is um, the barn historic designation. Yes, I um, called Mary Dunn at the state and we are on uh, for historic designation at their December meeting. Um, they're backed up because of COVID. So she said, I don't see any issues and she'll let me know, but we're on for December. So tell me, what does that actually mean, we're on? Do we have to do anything, present anything, provide nope, anything? I asked her that. She said, no, I have all the information I need. She said, um, basically, they'll just take a vote whether it should be put as a historic designation. And she said, I don't see any issues. But she, I said, well, if you need something, you know where I am. Okay. So she's happy. Um, do we know when that meeting is in case we wanted to listen in or be available? I believe it's December 8th. Uh, okay. Let me just check my notes here. Here it is. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it looks like it's it's the week that first that the week of the eighth or tenth or somewhere in there. So I'll just confirm with her and let everybody know. Okay, that's great. And for the committee, that's a full year of effort that we made to try to get on that agenda. You know, make our way through the paperwork, make fulfill the application. And so it's um, it's a very significant moment. I think if they designate us a historic structure, it'll it'll open up doors for us. So I'm um, anxious to hear. Great, thank you. All right, Esteban, um, I know everybody's anxious to hear from you. You are going to give us the preliminary results, I understand, of the townwide survey on the uh, uses of the Keisha farm. Uh, yes. Um... Let me share my screen. Oh, um, Bonnie, if you could um, allow me to share my screen so I can show the preliminary results. All right, so what do I have to do? I'm no whiz here. <laughs> um, I think you should be able to just hover over my camera. There's three buttons in the top right. Um, pressing the three buttons should drop down a menu and from there you should allow me to, um, it should give you the option to allow me to share my screen. All right, let's see. And the upper right? Yep, the upper right of my um, square. Oh, I tell you, I am challenged. <laughs> no, I don't see anything, sorry. And so go go over Esteban Square there. Put your cursor over there. And then on the upper right, there should be like three dots. Is that what it looks like, Esteban? Yep. Three dots. And if you click on those, a menu should drop down. All right, share photo document. Yep. Document. Um, yeah, just share. No, I don't think that's what I'm looking for. It should say um, share screen, allow share screen. Sorry, gang. Uh, Nope, nope, nope. All right, why don't you start talking and I'll work on this. Okay. Um, Esteban, so, is it something you'd like to share to us on our email? And we could- Yeah, it's it's something we can, um, I can quickly okay. do right now. Um,
so Cynthia, I sent it to you. Um, I don't have anybody else's email besides yours. So if you could right. just share that, I appreciate it. All right, great. I will be doing that while you're speaking. Okay. So um, the survey ended this past weekend and in total, including the three physical copies that we received, we have a total of 473 respondents. Um, this is really good. It's a lot of data. Um, so our next procedure as a team, Alex and I discussed was to clean the data and to analyze further. Um, the results that I shared to Cynthia are just preliminary easy results that doesn't involve that much error when analyzing and producing graphs. Um, in general, um, it was good. Like I said, everybody answered every question they needed to thoroughly. Um, there's a lot of feedback and we're looking forward to that. Um, um, Cynthia, should I go with the, um, the outline Alex provided me to share? No, I think um, I haven't gotten any information from you yet by email, but if there's anything that you could tell us about the general direction that the survey is sending us in, that would be helpful. Oh, yeah. So with a quick instance of the survey, uh, nothing to confirm, but it seems that people are more um, leading towards a CSA program. In addition to um, let me just pull up right here. <clears throat> a CSA program and most wanted the, the land to be of multiple use. Um, additionally, the most concern was more towards property management while the loss of home the loss of home value was seen as the majority of least concern. Um, least additionally, concern? sorry, yeah, least concern was loss of property value. Okay. Yeah, loss of property value and property management was the most concerned. Okay. Um, additionally, for gener revenue generating ideas, it seemed that a farm stand slash farmer market was the number one place. Uh, followed by a community supported agriculture program. Um, third place is letting farm, letting the, renting the land to a farmer. <clears throat> um, besides that, it's yes. Um, um, 29% of respondents lived between half a mile to a mile. Um, one mile to two miles was 37%. 19% was more than three miles, more than two miles, excuse me. And while 15% was less than a half mile. Another question that we decided to do as preliminary that you will see in the document was that 383 of the respondents did not participate in the, Keisha, in the past Keisha Farm Committee listening sessions, while only 80 did. Um, similarly, we can see the results again for, um, if any, for participants who attended the Keisha Farm tours uh, we saw that there was 442 that did not, while only 29 did. And from there, I think we, me, Alex and I as a team have to go through more analysis to provide more results for the other stuff. But um, besides that, that's all we can share as of now. Thank you. Any comments from the committee? Esteban, try to do it now. Oh. Um... Um, no, sorry, I still get the um, message host disabled participants sharing, screen sharing. Okay. <clears throat> All right. And I'm sorry, I can't download it. I can't show them anything because it's not downloaded yet. So I'm waiting. But as soon as it is, uh, committee members, I will send that right to you. But um, I just heard one thing that I thought was very interesting and, and good for our um, committee is that if I wrote it down quickly, 383 of the people that responded had not participated in any of the listening sessions, which means we're getting all new input from different people, which I think is just what we hoped for. You know, so some people were for, capable or comfortable coming forward electronically to participate in the Zoom, but many other people actually took the time to do the survey online. So I think that's great. Do we have an idea of how many people participated overall with the listening sessions? I mean, it's hard to do the duplicate on the listening sessions to know the total number who did one, you know, the survey, visioning, and the tour. Did, 
Do we, are you yeah. asking, do we know who did all three? Yeah, do we have an idea of how many people totally participated? And was that a good number? Um, I don't think um, we have that information. Um, all the information I just shared is new from this um, past month. Um, the previous um, data that we did with the listening sessions, we didn't count how many people, um, the data that we received didn't have the number of respondents or um, people who participated in it. It was just the total number of, you know, the questions and all that, if, that's ans if that answers your question. And PM, all of our listening sessions were taped and are available. And so we do have, I mean, we could easily go back in and ascertain how many people. It was probably 125 the first time. And then it was under 10 at each of the second and third sessions. So you figure maybe about 150 at the most because there were some duplicates. Yeah, I'm just wondering statistically why is the size of our town, how the participation would be valued as, you know? A good, a good amount, fair. Yeah, you know? it, it is a good amount. In the statistic world, um, generally when you're dealing with a population, you just take a sample of that population. So 300, 471 is a good enough um, sample size to predict or to analyze a whole population. That's what generally statisticians do when analyzing such a big, um, big population like a town. So yeah, 471 plus the three um, paper copies is a good number. Tara, I can't remember, but I think you told us how many um, surveys were returned in the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving Outreach? Gosh, I'd like to say it was like in the lower 300s. Okay, so, so this is a good I sample then. The number, when I heard the number of 480 or 470, that's awesome. All right, great. Thank you. Any other questions for Esteban? I know this is preliminary and there'll be a lot more analysis and deep diving into the meaning, but. Yep, 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 yep. <clears throat> All right, then if you don't mind, um, I'm gonna just give the report on the, the web page, and then you can go it through the presentation to the town council, Esteban, is that okay? All right, this yeah. is from Chaz, who is not able to be here tonight because he has a five to seven class. Um, the, if you got a chance and he sent you a link to the website, it was on a, a Google website. Um, and we, I made some corrections. Anybody else could have added anything that they wanted. He is connecting with, uh, Derek, who I'm assuming Bonnie is the, the, um, IT guy for the town. Yes. That's, okay. Yeah. Derek. Yep. So he said he'd be in touch with Derek tonight. So it could go live as of November one or two by the time it happens. And that'll be great. And he will make a couple of people on the Keisha Farms Committee admins so that we can do our own updating. And the updating process was very simple on the Google, on the, uh, Google platform that he used. So is there anybody who'd be willing to, to help with updating the website? Because I don't think we're gonna have the, the uh, luxury of having the U of H team do it forever. Anybody feel comfortable doing that? All right, well. I'll, I'll say I'll do it. And then when I see you personally, I'll look right into your eyes and get somebody else to help me. <laughs> I was like, you learn, you uh, learn. <laughs> All right. It's easy to say no on Zoom. <laughs> it's harder in person. All right. And so new business is this presentation to the town council on 12-6. Um, and so that's what I sent to all of you via email. Um, this was the outline of the U of H presentation that Esteban is just going to go over quickly. Yeah. Okay. So um, as you can see in the document, maybe you have it up. It's we begin with an intro to an introduction to the team, followed by that we go with the process of how we get our research, just as the case studies that we've done individually, um, solar analysis, estimates, yields and the problem maps, um, while also processing to get our data on input, following by that with the three listening sessions, the three site visits, the guided tours, and finally the survey. Um, Initially, we just got informed me that we made the third question space in the listening sessions, and we outreached it via Instagram, Facebook, town website, um, and a reminder. Um, following by that, it's a second topic, which is the results of the analysis of the survey. Um, we're going to show graphs, concerns of towns, what's the wants of towns, and go more in depth into that. And finally, to end it, to closely end the survey was 
to do our recommendation based on the analysis um, with the operation model that we're gonna go over um, soon as a, it's a business plan for a nonprofit. Um, we're gonna be asking the new and community farm a lot of questions tomorrow regarding this section and show the profitability numbers and um, ways to generate money without the low with, with low overhead and to be self-sustaining. Also to also um, have some recommendation grant opportunities um, from last year reports and community partnerships. Um, and in total, our recommendation for the property will be based on public opinion and profitability numbers while the last step would be future visions and next steps. So that's the outline right now. And um, as of now, Alex said, it is subject to change as we process. <clears throat> So that's what the committee from the University of Hartford is going to present on December 6th. That's, a, that's sort of a summary of the four stages of their work. Is there anything that you, that the committee or anybody listening in feels is missing from that presentation that you'd like to see on 12-6? I mean, I just have a, go ahead. I'm sorry. It's Bonnie. I just have a couple quick questions. Intro. Who's doing that? That's my question. Um, I believe Alex will be doing the intro and we'll be introducing oh. ourselves as the UHART team. Yeah. Okay. But, but Bonnie, to your question, I was just wondering, and Cindy, we've talked about this so many different times about um, starting at the very beginning, how this, do we want to go back and say applications, how we went about how this committee was formed, the purpose of this committee, the vote that we took to purchase the property or the vote that was taken by the town and how we evolved. I mean, I think it would be nice if we could show the evolution from the beginning to where we are. I agree, I Pam, be wrong. I agree. I agree, and I, th I reached out to both you and Mike, and hopefully we'll have that discussion. You know, as if you have nothing else for, for Esteban, then we can talk about our part too. Awesome. So, okay, anything for, yes, for uh, Bonnie? I just, again, it's Bonnie. I just have a question, are you, do you know about how long it this runs? Um, no, sorry, not right now. Okay, the only reason I ask is we tend to tell people about 15, 20, and then open for questions. Um, mm -hmm. Because usually, first of all, their agendas are packed. And secondly, you know, it's just, um, people, you know, you don't want to go on and on too much because that just, you lose focus of the group. That's all. Yeah. Yeah, I'm writing notes right now and going to be telling Alex. On the other then. hand, and I'll know more after tomorrow night, if we get a, a fairly new group of the council, then you're almost going to have to, as you said, Pam, start, start off by starting all over again, if you know what well, I mean. I think the town needs to hear that, Bonnie, because I think there's still some confusion out there. How, how did this group get together? You know, how yep, did it yep. evolve to work? You know? Yep. In all fairness, it's pretty comprehensive. And I think the people that are following this with the town are very much interested uh, in knowing what we're doing. I, I don't, I think it's, I'd be willing to bet it's one of the priorities they're going to want to hear about at that meeting. Could be wrong. I hear you. So Esteban, as your takeaway, will you go back to Alex and, and relay the town manager's um, concern that the presentation be focused and really no more than 15 minutes yep, so I, we can communicate to them. And, and for this committee, Alex and I discussed this morning that we need to see that presentation before yep. it goes to the town council so we can blend it with what we're going to do. And uh, we'll have that discussion later. But so take away back to Alex, 15 minutes and we need another meeting time before the December 6th meeting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yep. I, um, I, I have one thing. Um, anything about parking and traffic flow? Um, regarding the data and the, the survey? Yeah. So with that, um, I can't really say right now because it's really, it's an Excel file, so it's all compact. Um, that would have to wait till we show the presentation. <clears throat> Sorry the, reason, I, the reason I'm bringing that up, there was an event, I'm going to say two, two weeks ago uh, at, the, at the farm, at the barn. And between that and the soccer, the um, parking was just uh, 
overwhelming. Both sides of the street were taken up and uh, there really was nowhere to park. So uh, that is an issue whether we uh, address it now or, or down the road, it's something that ha has to be taken up one way or another. Dan, I, I'm sure that's in there because it is horrible living on Collier Road when anything major is going on over there. It's also a hazard to the kids. I mean, there's young kids yeah. mm -hmm. crossing that road and, and it's a site hazard trying to turn, get come from Collier. You can't, with two cards, I mean, it's just, it's, it's worse than it's ever been, I think. Um, so we've really got to have a plan for that. Will you take that back, Esteban, to um, Alex as well? And then I'm sure we'll talk um, before that presentation, but that's, uh, that's, if, if the survey shows anything, perhaps we can plan for that as well. Oh, right, yeah, with, right. with more analysis we're doing, it, we'll definitely be able to present it to you guys come that day. All right, thank you very much. Any last questions for Esteban? Esteban, if you need anything or you want me to go over things with you, feel free to call me or email me, it's Bonnie. Okay, thank you, appreciate that. Um, all right, have a good evening, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, that was an, a, a interesting start, you know, to, to the process. And I think um, perhaps I'll go back to Alex afterwards. He's really the direct project director and say the sooner, you know, you have more concrete results, the better it's going to be for us in trying to craft a presentation to the to the town council. Why don't we talk about Pam's idea, which was how how are we going to integrate what we've done for two years into that presentation? All right, I think Pam said, start with a little history maybe. Bonnie, what, what's the most successful way? I mean, usually people hate it when you talk at them. Should we consider making a PowerPoint or a timeline or what, what do you advise us to do? Um, I think that PowerPoints nowadays tend to be much better than uh, just talking at people. Okay. Plus, uh, the audience can see it easier and uh, the council also, but I think just people nowadays like to see visual. Okay. So and I'm hoping it would be like a brief overview, you know, not to lose anybody, but do they, so they have a <coughs> historical perspective. Yeah. And it was a good point made that there might be people who aren't familiar with this, if there's any turnover or churn that we would really want to bring them up to speed. Onto yep, their tax dollars paid for it so they're going to want to know Two and i think people, even people who are following are confused that they think we're making decisions and we really want to clarify that that it's based on the input so i think we can do it really succinctly and like a visual like a timeline and and we don't have to put all the words on there but just sort of this is when we did this this group was formed by this and and i think that will help because it does get dreadful when you're listening to long presentations um, about stuff you're not aware of. So we can tighten it up. Will this be part of this, their 15 minutes, the University of Hartford? Or do we have separate time to talk about our group here? Yeah, what's our timeline? You're right. Bonnie, oh, I'll leave that to you. You know what, if they're gonna do 15, can you do all this in five? Mm -hmm. I think so. Yep, I think so too. And that way, because we usually tell people no more than 20. So that would work out perfect. All right, so I can easily put together the PowerPoint on the timeline and the listening. I have the dates for the listening sessions and the dates for the actual farm tours. I had reached out to Pam and Mike to ask if each of them would feel comfortable just kind of speaking. And again, it's going to be briefly to the survey process. That would be Pam. And then Mike to the idea of land use that the, you, know, you had investigated even briefly with your subcommittee. Uh, I, Pam, do you feel comfortable in going just uh, within the constraints of the time, just saying how we create, how that survey came yeah, out? Yeah, I'd like to, I'll run it past you or Bonnie or whoever before. Uh, see, right. matter of fact, I wouldn't mind helping you with the PowerPoint if you need help, if we want to meet. I mean, it's hard to do over the, uh, Hard for me anyway. Okay. To do it, I'm more than happy. All right. And Mike, would you feel comfortable just speak? I know it. At one point, there was some great conceptual ideas that came across. Yeah, not, not a problem. Not a problem. Okay. You know, we had discussed it once before, but I'll go over it with you and then we'll. 
I'll mm -hmm. have some type of game. Well, let me just ask you, was that when like when they discussed the cost of a field, the 500,000, and so people have an idea what things, what the cost was to the ideas or? No, but it, it was like, more on the point of, of, of general usage for that, for, for the area. It just, it, okay. we, we, we got different, different feeds from everyone. Yeah, because they came up with unbelievably great research on costs of things. We have access to all of that. I just saw recently that is on YouTube. That was a that was a taped meeting. So we can go back and look at that. But Mike, I, I think I heard Esteban say that the majority of people that responded wanted to see multiple uses on the property. So that would really um, dovetail with what you were just saying is that that seemed to be you know, the, the, the conclusion that you had come up with too. Correct. So. You, want, you want to get all areas too. Okay. Um, one of the things that he did mention, and, and as he was going, I just I didn't note it quick enough, but it's amazing. I think he said it was it was thirty, was it thirty seven percent was outside the mile and a half radius, which I, I that kind of surprised me a little bit. You figure people closer to it would be more, you know. And I'm only thinking of back with the with the Wilkes Farm thing. That's that's why it was it was catching me more, you know, because that is a big group of people in that Windmill Hill area with it, that would have input in there. So you figure the Windmill Hill area and the back, you know, the, the what do you call it? The, um, Win, Winwood Village where it's hang dog and copper mill and all that. So I just, I, I find that, I found that a little offbeat, but whatever, it, it matters who, who lives in what neighborhood. Obviously, if you live in old weather shield, it's not gonna affect you as much, but it's gonna affect you tax dollar wise or whatever the case, how, however, so. That's all. You know, I keep looking at my phone. Whatever he sent me has not downloaded yet, but as soon as it does, I will send it to all of you. So maybe yeah. maybe he did speak very quickly. I thought he said 50% of the people were within a half a mile of the farm, though. Did I, I don't hear know. that? He, or, he, went, no. he went quick. He went quick. He went quick. Okay. I thought, I was, I thought he said 29% or something. I, was, I yeah. couldn't count. I, you know what? Right. I think you're right. I think he said 29% was within a mile and a half. And then yeah. it, was, it was like... 39% was outside of that. Okay, interesting. Is he planning on showing the pie charts from the visioning sessions? I, I don't know. We, it's certainly a good question to ask. I don't know if he'll show them or update them, but we have them locked well, in. I mean, that's a whole different, you know, I know it's kind of good yes. about that. It shows the various attempts we've tried to gather. Yep. Ideas, you know, we did the tours, we did the visioning, three visioning mm -hmm. sessions. We we then addressed a physical paper uh, ballot of that of you know what a survey and uh, also the one that we had online. We can put that right in the PowerPoint, Pam. Too the, the all yeah. three listening sessions have were summarized on one pie chart, so we can put yeah. that right on there. And, and, and now people we'll have a gonna, website. Yeah, they're they're also probably going to want to know where. You advertised, you know, that we did rear reminder, we were online, we, you know, all the different things. Good. All right, um, let's see, outline any additions, KFC, Mike and Pam. Okay, um, I got a call from the University of Hartford today. Um, it was Alex and Ken Goroshka on the same line. And they indicated that on December 6th, that will be the last, um, of the obligations that the University of Hartford are gonna fulfill for us. And with Alex and the majority of the team being seniors, they're not gonna be able to continue on the project with us. However, he did say that we would have full documentation of all of the work that they did over the course of the two semesters and the summer, so that we would have a report similar to a consultant's report. So no one would have to start the process over. There would be, there would be data, documentation, and um, I would think that report would be really useful for all the counselors and the public. We could just link the public to it as well. So I was very sorry to hear that. They have been uh, a remarkable group of young men and women. And when you think about it, they really functioned as free consultants for us uh, when we didn't have the ability to hire professional ones. And I feel they acted very professionally. So we will we will meet with them one more time prior to that presentation, but I think that at that point we can all, you know, give them our thanks for everything they did for us. They really made it possible for us to 
continue on in a professional manner and keep that distance between us and the public, which was so important, you know, to, to us in, um, in the committee's functioning. So and I think that, we're better than any of the consultants we interviewed. And I think <laughs> we can bring up the cost and how much money was saved by using University of Hartford. We certainly were cheaper than any of the ones we interviewed. Right. All right. Lots of other um, business tonight. I'm um, sorry. The, one, I'll go very one, quickly. Well, actually, two other quick comments. Okay. If you good. want anything in the council packet, you know, like um, documentation to back up the agenda item, I will need it the Tuesday before the meeting. So the Tuesday before December 6th. Correct. You're going to need whatever the University of Hartford wants them to see in the packet. Okay, good to know. Correct. That's yep. the November 30th, I think that would be. Uh, I don't have a calendar, but yeah, it's the two, it's as long as I have it by the end of that day. November 30th. And that's actually important, Bonnie, to tell the University of Hartford team too. We want to meet before November 30th to see what they're going to say, because they can't include anything that we haven't seen to just to vet and validate and make sure it's appropriate. Okay. Right. So um, November 30th. The only other thing I was going to mention is once we see the survey results, um, I think it's important while you have an audience to correct anything that isn't, isn't um, right information. For example, he said people are worried about property values. That is the complete opposite of what really happens. And I don't know if that's ever been addressed before, but when you live near open space, your property values go up. And I can find out, because when I was in Hebron, that town has more open space than any town I've ever seen. And there's documentation to show that it doesn't go down, it goes up because people want to have that near their home. It'll be good so to have it in front of, of us. He was speaking yeah. very quickly on if, that. Yeah. If there's things that need to be corrected, that would be the time because well, you got an audience. But I think he's addressing the, the uh, visioning sessions when people had openly expressed the concern of activity going so close to their home. So I right. think he what was I'm asking, saying is as a presentation, if, if you could have one yeah. sentence that just says, gee, here's some concerns that came up um, and we wanna kind of um, express that it's, you know, what the fact is, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, Cindy mentioned that months ago, I remember. Yeah. yeah. So I, I, I thought he, I I'm just sorry. want to say, I thought he said that property values was of least concern in, oh, as, in the survey. Yep, yeah, I, I think that's I think that's what he said, but I could have missed it too because he did go fast. I was pretty sure he said least concern yeah. as well. Yeah. That's yeah. what I yeah. heard too. Yeah, the most concern was property management. Okay. All right, Bonnie, did you want to speak about? Um, you sent me something this afternoon from the Weathersfield Education Foundation. Uh, Do you yes. Want to speak to that uh, right here. Um, Kathy Bagley um, emailed me this afternoon and we've, um, she received a request from the Weathersfield Education Foundation. They're looking to receive permission to apply for a grant from the state to refurbish the greenhouse at Keisha for educational use by students. And uh, it's due in December 20th and they need time to plan. So they were wondering if they should even do the application. And I just said, I would rather just pass it by you guys. I'm, I think it's a great idea, but I said, geez, perfect timing. I'm gonna see him tonight. So your thoughts? I can speak to the grant if you, if you need just to know the background. As part of the COVID relief funding, there's money that's going to schools and nutrition programs. And so this money is, immediate and it's a one time only kind of uh, a grant. I looked at the application after Bonnie sent me the link and um, it's up to $25,000. It can be used for infrastructure as long as that infrastructure um, satisfies one of like five different uh, approaches to farming, growing food, nutrition and student involvement. So um, I think that that would be the focus of the grant. In terms of obligations, there are none, except that it be spent within 18 months if you're awarded it. And um, Bonnie, didn't you, didn't you include that if the, the community isn't, isn't embracing of it, we just 
don't accept it or oh that's correct yeah because actually any grants have to go through the council mm -hmm. so at some point i got to bring it to council but they at least want to know should they start meeting and getting their act together and i mean i think there's it's a no-brainer sure do it and then uh, let's see what happens how does the rest of the committee feel I mean, we got feedback. I think we heard a lot, I mean, just preliminarily about that type of thing. So it wouldn't, it's in the ballpark of a structure that's already on the land. Um, uh, and the fact that there's no obligation, I think that it is right. like a no brainer that the town council would have to accept the acceptance of the grant um, or approve the acceptance of the grant. So I wouldn't want to lose that opportunity, right? That's my thought. And is there any harm in going forward with that? And um, if it gets negated, that no harm, no foul. I mean, you just don't no, do they it. They understand that. Kathy already told them that, so they understand. That's you know, so that that's fine with them. They get it. They say go with it too. I agree. Yeah, I, th I think it's a great idea. Get something started, and and that could have future use. Jenna. Jenna or Mike, are, are you? Yeah, I say do it. Absolutely, I say do it. Oh, okay. I um, stepped away for a second. I think um, because I'm not fully understanding if they if they get the grant and move forward with the project on it, is that something that um, like how long? It, <laughs> Sorry. Um, is that something that mm -hmm. is a long-term thing? I, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I'm trying to. Let me look at my eyeball. Pick. You are definitely multitasking there. <laughs> <laughs> post, post Halloween. <laughs> That's right. Too much candy. All right. So, cute. Jenna, all, all the grant says is that the money has, to, if, if awarded, has to be spent within 18 months on the project as submitted. So there's no other obligation to the community and there's no match or community contribution of any kind. So it's, but it's work being done on the greenhouse. And is that something then that we're locked into like for the future, you know, um, that we can't do something else with that greenhouse? No, it's only the structure. So okay. you, the structure of the greenhouse, its intention is to keep, teach kids to grow food mm -hmm. and to you you know learn about nutrition and you know support health. Right. So I would think those would probably be activities that we'd be supporting forever. Yeah, yeah. And basically, Kathy said the funds are meant to provide a combination of resources um, to support projects that will help build capacity for long-term farm to school programs. So, you know, I mean, the, the thought is that this, at, I mean, not that they're gonna take it 24 seven, it's only for them. It's just that they would like to be able to utilize it if they're gonna get this money to uh, redo the greenhouse. Okay, yeah. thank you for clarifying. Sorry, that was um, such a process to get up. Not I did read too that, I mean, obviously Highcrest is right next to this uh, greenhouse. So they have a, distinct advantage, but I read that in the grant, uh, farm field trips are are covered so that someone from Hanmer, for example, could hop on a bus and go to work in the greenhouse. And that kind of, that's included in the funding. So it wouldn't exclude our other elementary school children and populations either. So Kathy, I mean, Bonnie, I think you can um, say that, you know, we had no objections. It sounds like win-win. Okay, I'll be glad to do that tonight. And that has to go before the town council? Yeah, I probably, I mean, if the grant is due December, I'd probably give it to them uh, their second meeting in December. Wait, they wouldn't hear about it. So now they're, they're you're not gonna see them in November at all? Just once, and let me tell you that agenda is so long because- Oh, really? Okay. Um, because there's only one meeting. So is your advice to go forward? Yes. With, the, yep. with the grant application and in, in the hopes that they will approve it. Okay. Yeah. And then um, basically once the election's over, I could email the council just as an FYI. 
just be, so that they can't say they don't know about it. So. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. One more other business. Um, it'll be two years, guys, this December since we started this, and uh, we're losing the University of Hartford. Uh, I went through the old uh, the proposal that we got from the one that we accepted actually, and tried to see did we do everything that they were going to do for us, and wh what's left. And what's really left is coming up with a model that we could then present to the town council in the hopes that they would accept it for the community. And that model includes some kind of um, sustainable, so some kind of sustainable model. And so Sue Bettino, who you may remember from the Newton Community Farm, has graciously agreed to come back one more time tomorrow night. And the University of Hartford team is going to kind of interview her. They come up with questions about how do you run a farm that gets not any funding whatsoever from the, the town? It's completely self-sustaining. And so there's going to be a special meeting tomorrow night. And I will, um, I will do the Facebook advertising on that because I think Chaz is too busy. But I'll put it out tonight that this is just going to be a Q&A with a, a, a farm that's been self-sustaining for 15 years and doesn't take a dime from the city in which they are located. So I think with that, the University of Hartford team, when they said at the end of their presentation, they wanted to talk about a vision or a, I think with that, they'll have everything they need. And then we need to think about what we're going to do after December of 2021. This has been a, you know, a couple of years. If uh, I kind of gently asked Bonnie, would you be willing to work with us if we could just see it through a setting up something? Yeah. Well, Cindy, I guess, Cindy, yes, my, my question to that was, was, and I actually, I was going to wait till the end to ask that was what happens after the, the, the presentation? I mean, what, what, where do we go from there? What happens? What, what, what's the next step? Well, so we were charged with trying to determine what the town wants to do with the property. And essentially on December 6th, we'll have, we'll have completed that charge. If, mm -hmm. if Bonnie and the town council wanted to say, could you give us a model or could you help us create a model of how that would look? Perhaps we can just end in that fashion. If not, I don't know where we go from here. Okay. Yeah. What's I, the I, I, yeah. What's the feeling of the group on that? It seems oh. like there, there needs to be some kind of group, either a successor group mm -hmm. that would take over implementing the ideas or <laughs> we just keep going for a while. But do we have to leave it to the town council to decide what they think the next step is? You know what I have to do? I've got to read um, and I can do that tomorrow. I have to read what the resolution was when you were formed and see what it says. And then I could then I could actually answer the question whether we need to have them give you direction. Cause maybe it says, and I'm just throwing this out, do a survey with the University of Hartford and then your job is done. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, so I gotta find out what that mission was. And then if we need to, we're gonna need uh, a direction from the council. Okay. All right, so then we, it's to be determined whether or not you know we will con we will continue as a working group, maybe with a different a different focus. Um, I don't know if the town council would ever like us to do a public presentation, but Bonnie, maybe you could. I mean, essentially speaking to the town council is a public presentation. Oh yes, but it's, it's embedded in a long agenda. I don't know if they'd ever like us to just talk to the community, or you can see. Maybe yeah, I mean, actually, those. though, I'm going to try to have you guys up front. Okay. So you don't have to, I mean, especially the students don't have to go through these meetings. I mean, to me, first meeting of every month is supposed to be a workshop. So let's workshop it and put it right up front. Okay, good. Did we have a mission statement at the beginning? I forget. It's been so long ago. I think we I, you know, did. I think we did too. I think Gary made it very clear that we had a, a what our role what our role was. 
I'll and initially we were just supposed to hire a consultant to, to, <laughs> to manage the process. And then we did that. And then, you know, COVID hit and economic realities hit. And, and then we became the consultant essentially. Mary, are you going back to the meeting minutes from the just, first meeting? I know I had, I thought I had a mission yeah. statement somewhere. I'll keep that. I think so too. All right. So tomorrow night for anybody who was available and I, we needed to get a quorum. So those people that committed, please, please uh, actually sign on because we, we want to make it a special meeting. We want to make it open to the public. We want it to be taped so that people can see it and hear it. And this is literally how have they been self-sustaining for 15 years in a, in a community much larger than ours and with a much smaller entity. So it'll be very interesting to hear <laughs> that that be the focus of it and it so might help go ahead oh no no go ahead I, you can finish i did find a mission statement all right good. yes please um, and i can put it in the minutes um what i have from gary was the role of the committee is to provide recommendations to the council through the town manager's office on possible reuse scenarios as stated during council meetings emails phone conversations and the posting for applicants um, the committee is created to ensure a transparent process and provide opportunities to vet ideas using open meetings and public forums. And then there's a couple of things, you know, that we could do. We could do the RFP for a consultant, work with the town staff to research and prepare for planning and other grant applications, host townwide share it's open to the public and help present findings to the council. And that was kind of it, so. Uh, excellent, that's great. So, I mean, they are interested in reuse scenarios, which is what we can present. Yeah, that'd be great in the minutes. Cynthia, yes. um, when you sent the email regarding the meeting for tomorrow night, I actually thought it was for tonight. So are you so, not available in the car? I am not available tomorrow. I have my last meeting with the Harford Foundation for Public Giving. Okay. Does that mean we don't have a quorum? Is it five o'clock again tomorrow? It's five o'clock again tomorrow. So it's, I, who, who can attend tomorrow at five okay. o'clock? All right, so Pam, Jim, and I, that's three. I'm on a fence because I might be in Rhode Island. Okay, all right, maybe Jenna? Cindy, I'll let you know, I'll let you know in the morning. All right, Mary, thank you. Okay, all right, well, thank you very much. we posted the meeting anyways as a special meeting, so. You know, right now it's a special meeting. All right, good. And I will post it on the Facebook page as soon as we finish tonight so that other people who might be interested in how a self-sustaining model works can see it and believe it, that, you know, that it can mm -hmm. happen. All right. All right, is, um, we have a couple people on the line. Is there any public comment? Would anybody like to, to say anything? Okay. And... Uh, I think that's it, unless there's anything for the good of the cause. I have a couple of quick ones. Uh, meeting dates for 2022, we have to start setting them up for committees. So if you are a go for the following year, are you going to stay with the first Monday of every month at five? That was that worked well for me and for the town manager, because there's also a town council meeting that night. So it kind of right. one rolled into the next. OK. That um, and then you? the other question is, and I think we talked about this at the last meeting, but because of the U of H kids, we decided to stay with Zoom. Do you want to do them in public or would you prefer to stick with Zoom? Anybody have any preference? I think having both options, if we can Zoom and be in person, I think is important. Uh, I got it. Technology, technologically, we can't. So, um, I've got to either do one or the other. No. Okay. Could we Zoom for the months, the, the cold, wintry months, like January, February? Can we change at any time to in-person? Uh, yep. Yes, absolutely you can. So let's go Zoom the first three months. So go, Zoom? Go, go Zoom January through March. Okay. Sounds good. And then revisit it in March. Be, be nice to have an in-person meeting as a kickoff or something like that. Uh, yeah. Well, our meeting with the town council, Jim, will be in person. Yeah. September but 6th, be... they meet in person. 
Right, but I mean, we won't be meeting, we'll be participating. But we have, or a maybe, a, maybe a party or something. <laughs> <laughs> something. You know what? She cut, you something. should probably give a party for University we, of Harker kids. Yeah. I think we should. It might Pizza be hard to get on their schedule. They've been wonderful, really. I mean, just an extraordinary asset to the whole process. Couldn't is have it, done it without them. Is there an option after the meeting in December that we get a, we have a room there and we're able to like bring in pizzas for them or something? Uh, you could have a room, uh, but you guys don't have a budget, right? We do not. <laughs> <laughs> Well, for we can pizzas, all chip in five bucks and yeah. we could get some stuff we, sent from Village. <laughs> I, I bet they have exams that week in December. Wouldn't you think? They probably would. <laughs> How about know. gift cards? How about if we all chipped in five dollars for each of them and got them like Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks gift cards just as a, That's a, a paltry idea. thank you? That's fine. That's a good idea. Yeah. Good idea. How about something from Weathersfield? Yeah, that's I thought what of I, that too. Okay. I mean, something that can put in their permanent record when they apply to different positions and things. What an accomplishment. We would have been lost without them, I think. They actually asked today if we'd be willing to do recommendations. And I said, absolutely. I would, I would be honored to comment on their, their professionalism. And actually, they paid this committee a nice compliment too, though. I mean, they, they felt that we were all really good people to work with, that we were um, professional and we had integrity and it was nice to hear. So let's think about that, all right? How sure. we can do something to, mm -hmm. to thank them for their contribution. Okay. okay. Cindy, just a point of clarification for the meeting with the town council is December 6th and we have our meeting right before then, the next, our, do we have a meeting that night too? No, but we what we might want to do is just meet ahead of time just to go over what we're going to do and say. Like if we met at the meetings at seven, we're normally yes. here at five. Even if we got here at six at, at the town hall, just kind of went over or six thirty what we're doing, you know, because the kids will be there too. So we'll probably want to be there to greet them. And uh, does that sound right to everybody? About mm -hmm. thirty minutes. Uh, and, okay. And we'd have that face to face meeting that we were thinking about. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then we can all go out to Lucky Loose afterwards if necessary or if possible. <laughs> it sounds like Jim really wants to go out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get out much. So. <laughs> I don't know. All the restaurants are closed on Mondays, aren't they? You're right. Most You're right. Of them. Who is open on Monday? Oh. And we got a nice note from uh, in the chat. Thanks for our work. Appreciate it. All right. If there's nothing else for the good of the cause, a motion to adjourn. Wait a happy Thanksgiving to everybody this month. You um, too. Hopefully, you too. Thanksgiving. Thank you. Hopefully, we'll meet sometime between Thanksgiving and that December 6th date. So. Yeah, get your turkey now. I know. I'm afraid I'm <laughs> not going to get a bird. <laughs> Us too. Just want you to know. <laughs> uh oh, there's oh, well, going to be a run on fish. him. I don't care. <laughs> All right. Motion to adjourn yeah. from someone. I'll second yeah. it. All right, second by Mike Orsini. Yep. All right, and as soon as this, I keep looking, as soon as Esteban's data downloads, I will send it on to all of you. Okay, okay? great. All right, thank you. Thank you. Have a great night, everybody. Thank you, Bonnie. Thanks. You're welcome, bye. Thanks, Bonnie. Bye.